after year after year, <laughs> we deliver a new technology. Four years ago, I stood on this stage and we announced the first generation of our convergical technology called Miron, and then we went every year and introduced another one. Two years ago, we had introduced the great technology of Nehelem, which really fits up our EX and EP servers and our clients. And of course, we came with 32 nanometer just at the beginning of this year, and it goes on and on and on. Today, I'm extremely proud to go talk about Sandy Bridge, which is our next generation micro architecture. This is a unique one, because this one we are very much putting together basically all is required, the whole system of a PC on a single piece of silicon. This is enabled by our leadership 32 nanometer and a second generation IK gate because it not only allows us to put around billion transistors, but it allows us to do that in even lower power and better battery life than the previous generation. And just to give you a perspective of what billion transistors really mean. First, you know, a human being really enamored by huge buildings. And the Empire State Building have about 10 million bricks, just a, bi just a million. 10 million is an interesting number because I checked the Intel history. And we used to have 10 million transistors on Pentium 3, somewhere around 99 time frame. And we had about 10 million, a little bit, on Pentium 4, something around 2004. You know, I talked about dreams and ideas. The human brain has about 100 billion neurons. Well, neuron is a much more, a little bit more sophisticated than transistor, but nevertheless, numbers are getting close. And if we are able to continue our pace, which I believe we will continue, 100 billion transistors are not much out, about 10 years, 11 years out. So we are getting close. And you could imagine what kind of capabilities would be enabled. We are going to ship this product and put it on the shelves early next year. And it has a lot of architectural advances I would like to share with you. The first one is really, we said, putting graphics onto single chip of physical. Beforehand, the CPU used to communicate to the memory controller, and the graphics was talking just to the memory. And usually, especially on graphics and media, the bandwidth of the memory interface is extremely important. So what you really want to do in a smart integration is to really get the graphics onto the CPU, but not just connect, continue to connect to the memory controller to the memory, but really use the huge cache that exists on the CPU. This one gives about 4 to 5x faster throughput, which when the data is in the cache, which is a huge reason why our performance is getting better. On top of that, we of course significantly improved and re-overhauled the architecture of both the graphics, the media, and the CPU. But when you put the things together, you could make things really smart. And one of the smart things you could make when you integrate things together is power management. At the end of the day, it's all about power, it's all about battery life. Last year, we just brought you, with the core technology, uh, the innovation method called Turbo. And the Turbo is an extremely good method because what it uses, it gets the CPU use the thermal headroom that exists and just boost the performance when you need it, because it's all about the response time. But Sandy Bridge brings Turbo to the next level. And what you see in the white color is basically the extra benefit you get from the Turbo of Sandy Bridge because it uses more capabilities and goes even beyond the TDP limit. But the really beauty of this second generation of Turbo is when you get to more cores. Because the one of the limitations that existed on the first generation of core was that the more core you added to the game, the less benefits you get from 
the uh, turbo because you already exhausted the thermal limits. Well, it's exactly the opposite with centrifuge because of the architecture and circuit design techniques as well as the ability to go beyond the TDP limit. As you can see, other than adding one bin of frequency, we get many more bins of frequency, which is exactly what you need to get to fast response. Now, if you put the graphics on this uh, memory, this CPU, you want to get the same phenomena done on the graphics as well. So the graphics will be able to use the headroom of the thermals in the system and boost its frequency, what we call the dynamic frequency feature. And it all plays together. Because in many cases, when you run the graphics at full steam, the CPU is not that active and vice versa. So you could really use and get the best performance and the best capabilities by the time you need it. This is what we call designing for fast responsiveness. So this is something we are extremely proud of and we believe it's going to bring new capabilities to the market and make sure that we do a great job. And this is going to be the logo and this is why we believe that Sandy Bridge really deserves the visibly, visibly smart computing solution. <coughs> And it changes very much the way we look at APC, because now it's become, and I'm going to show that later, a center of many things you do. 